Y'all not even gonna sit here and pretend like I know I don't look a hot mess right now because uh, I know I do. Hello my little butterflies, in this video it's going to be my book review on The Feeling Boyfriend by Casey West. So you guys, this is a book that has been on my shelf for maybe a little over a year now and I finally freaking read it and I gave it a 3 out of 5 stars. And I was kind of mixed in between giving it a two star rate and a three star rate, but I finally settled on three stars because I, I, I was, I guess you could say I was fairly satisfied with how it ended. So I ended up settling on um, three stars instead of two. But basically, if you don't know, this book is a YA contemporary and it is about this girl named Gia. And the story starts off as her being in the parking lot of her prom and her boyfriend Bradley dumps her in the parking lot. and. Um, before he can go in and she can introduce him to her friends and she suspects that her friends think that she, that Bradley doesn't exist so she's a finding stranger that's sitting in the car in the parking lot and asks him to go home and change and to come back and be her fill-in date and be her pretend Bradley because her friends have never met Bradley before. It's basically after that it's pretty much just her telling one lie after the other after the other to cover up all the other lies that she has and the fill-in Bradley, who we later found out his name is Hayden, which I think is such a pretty name. Like, I really like that name. That is a beautiful name, Hayden. I really think that's pretty. He ends up being her fill-in boyfriend and stuff for the night, and he leaves. But before he left, she didn't get to know his name. But she's up finding out that his sister is actually in one of her classes. And her his sister goes to Gia and tells her that she owes her brother a favorite, that she has to be his pretend girlfriend at his ex-girlfriend's graduation party because she doesn't want her to get back with him. And that's pretty much what this story is about. It's just about covering up lie after lie after lie because you told this many lies and now you've done yourself into a grave. But I end up giving it a three out of five stars. And I really hate it that I didn't enjoy this book as much as other people did. But I mean, you know, what can you do about it? I just, I just didn't, you know, love it like that like but I don't really care for mushy books like talking about all the time but this wasn't bad on the mushy it just it's other stuff that bothered me like it was very specific it wasn't that many things I didn't like about this book but it was very specific things that I didn't like that kept going on constantly through the book so it's just something that it was certain things that just kept happening over and over that made me be like yeah I'm tired of hearing this I'm tired of seeing this so character wise I kind of got the mean girl the mean girls effect from you know our it you know girl group throughout the story i initially hated gia because i felt like she was a small little brat that and she just you know was used to getting everything her way um and she was just you know too worried about other people's opinion like i don't like that in a person and i still i didn't hate her as much in the end as i did in the beginning but i still didn't like her because she just constantly let people walk over her and she she just always felt like she had just had to prove stuff to other people and i feel like um you are the CEO of your own motherfucking life. Like, you don't have to explain. You don't owe anybody an explanation for things that are going on in your freaking life. If they never met your boyfriend, they think you lying, then oh, I let the fucking bitch you lying. Like, you don't have to. I don't like people that always feel like they have to prove themselves. Like, you know you know what you're doing. Is, what you did is true. You know, you had a boyfriend or whatever. Because other people don't believe you feel like you have to go out of your way to get you to believe. I mean, they believe you. This shit. If they believe you, that's good. They don't. Then, oh, well, fucking take a flight. You know what I'm saying? Take a flight. You know? <laughs> like, I don't know what to say. Like, I don't like people like that. Like, I don't care about what you think about me. If you don't believe me, you don't believe me. That's your personal problem. Okay, with Hayden, I mean, like, he is such a beautiful person. You know, he has such a beautiful name, he has such a beautiful personality. But what I didn't like about him was that they painted him as the perfect person. Like, I don't like books that do that. Like, they painted him like he had no flaws whatsoever and he was just amazing. Because that shit is not relatable to not That's not true. Everybody has flaws. The most perfect people have flaws. And I don't like that they made him to be like this perfect guy and, you know, nothing is wrong with him whatsoever. I honestly hated Jules the most and I really think she needed her ass kicked for all of the drama that she stirred up between this group of friends like I but and, and speaking of group of friends I'm gonna come back to Jules but speaking of group of friends Gia I think Gia really did a new group of friends period anyway because they, these girls they ain't loyal they not loyal these hoes ain't loyal how do you let a new girl come into your group that you guys have been friends for a long long time you let this new girl just come in and try to rule everything and wreck everything and make your friends turn against you like that's not no friends real friends would have told her um, mm -mm, boo -boo. that's not about to happen again mm -mm. you knew we don't know you like that we're in all forever I'd rather, mm -mm. it's not about to go down like that but no did our friends do that they didn't hmm, friends my ass ain't no kind of friend but okay so back to jewels i mean yeah i hated her the most but seeing as 
as her character was meant to be painted as the Red Devil. Red Devil. In the first place, I liked how the artist did it. They did it really well. So they did a good job on Drew's character because she was meant to be seen that way. I just personally didn't like her. But I liked that they made her seem how she was meant to be. Like her sneakiness, her sly remarks, her pity parties that she threw, just her overall evilness was done so good. The only thing I can say that I wish I had more from Jules is I wish, you know, we had more of a background for her. Like, I want to know why she was such a bitch. Like, I want to know why she was such a bitch and why she felt like she had to make it her life's mission to dethrone Gia from the group. Like, did she have a purpose or was she just being an evil bitch to be an evil bitch? Still, personally, I still feel like Jules just needed her ass kicked for just all of the shade she was throwing in this book. It was just so much shade, you guys. Just so much. She just threw so much shade. Just so much. She did job. So much shade. But to me, plot wise, this is just an overall, like, cliche, really cliche book. You know, it goes, you know, perfect guy meets messed up girl then the perfect guy shows the messed up girl that she doesn't have to you know put on a facade when she's around other people she doesn't have to you know pretend to be someone else when she's in public and then as normal the perfect guy and the messed up girl get together at the end of the story and then all is well you know it's a very cliche story i just started to get really frustrated with you in this book with all of her struggling to tell you know the truth because there's so many times she wanted to tell she she could have it's not like anything messed up she could have she had the perfect opening she started to say it and she got so she couldn't tell anymore and, and it's pushed off and pushed off and, and of course it's all gonna blow up in the end anyway but i just think this is so stupid i just got frustrated with it so much because it happened so many times of oh well i want to tell her first and then she was starting and then mm, she put back and changed her mind it's like okay look just get out and fucking spit it out just say it already like it's not that serious it's not that big of a deal just push it out and say okay i lied Okay, he wasn't, I really did have a boyfriend named Bradley, but he broke up with me in the parking lot, and then I brought this guy in, and was not Bradley, pretended that he was Bradley, but he's really not. Like, how hard is that to say that? I lied. Shit, bitch, I lied. Like, how hard is that? It's just like, I was tired of that, and I got up, tired of her taking all the crap from Jewel over and over, because it left. In real life, there's no way I don't think any girl would take that much crap. You know all the time she would have clicked out a long time ago because i know i would have like if i have to worry about if you're my friend then you're not my friend point blank period i also didn't like that in this book you get you you see that gia is wrapped up in like the hero syndrome because hayden stepped in and saved the day for her at prom and then all i feel like she didn't really like him because he's this great guy i felt like she liked him because he saved her from, you know, being embarrassed by her friends that she was broke, that she got broken up with in the parking lot. I think if she never would have broke up with Bradley in the parking lot and she still met Hayden anyway, she would still never, I don't think she would have tried to talk to Hayden because he didn't save her. I just think she's wrapped up in the hero syndrome, honestly. I don't think she really likes him. It's just the hero syndrome that pushed her to him. That's a trope in this book that I'm like so sick of seeing in like YA books. And that is just like the perfect syndrome. Like, you know, in a lot of YA books, that, and a lot of times it's with the parents, they try to make the parents just so freaking perfect. Like, I want to say 90% of YA books are like that. Like, it's like, in the other 10% are those rare books that it's like, oh, where I was put up for adoption or something. Like, something crazy like that. But majority of the lot of YA books have this perfect trope that they feel like, oh, my parents are so perfect. They never fight. They have the same routine every day. They don't fuss about anything. You know, they don't, but they don't express their emotions. They don't bring up anything if it's not happy and smiling and sunshine and rainbows and unicorn and butterflies i hate that because that shit is not relatable and like reading this reminded me why i don't read contemporary that often because i'm tired of seeing that trope it's like when i read romance now i like to read adult romance where there's drama because it's relatable nobody's relationship is freaking perfect everybody fights in a relationship everyone argues in a relationship now, I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna say fist fight because that's not normal but i mean like fussing Everybody argues in a relationship, at least at some point, everybody argues. So for you to say, my parents are perfect, they don't argue about anything, and everybody's always happy, it's not relatable. And I'm just, I don't like, I don't really care to read books that's not, has some kind of relatability in it. And that is not relatable at all. Overall, I was satisfied with majority of the ending because they did get the major problem solved, and it didn't end with everybody holding hands and singing Kumbaya. So I really did like that because if it would have ended with everybody all, oh my God, all happy and everybody's best friends and stuff, I probably wouldn't have, it probably would have got two stars because 
it's like, come on, you know, getting well, it would have never happened like that in real life. Now, recommendation wise, it wasn't good enough for me to want to reread it, but I would recommend it for someone who hasn't read it yet and it's like a first time read and you just want something like with a fast plot. Um, I would recommend it for that. But I know some people like, you know, the cliche-ness, the mushy cliche. I don't really care for it. I like drama in my romance books. That's why when I read romance books, it's damn near, you might as well say erotica when I read them. And it's just that those have so much more drama in it than, and they're more realistic than, than this. But, um, overall I gave this book a 3 out of 5 stars. I did also put this review on my blog, so I will link that in my description bar below so you guys can go and check my um blog out if you guys would like to i also put it on goodreads but my goodreads review is just a link to my blog and probably link to this video also um but thank you guys for watching my video comment down below if you rate this book what your thoughts were on this book if you agree with me on any points of my review and i will see you guys in my next video bye